everyone and welcome to the S79 sewing studio. So today I've got a great little project for you. Um, we're going to learn how to make these fabulous little Christmas gonks. I'm also going to show you how to um, make the pattern so you can make them absolutely any size you like. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we're going to make the pattern. Um, to make the pattern, you're going to need some paper. I'm using A3 paper. Um, you can obviously use any size paper, depending on the size of the gonk that you want to make. Um, obviously a pen. If you've got a compass, then that's, that's going to be useful. If not, I'm going to show you a way you can do it without a compass. And obviously you're also going to need um, a rule. Okay, so with the pattern prepared, we're now going to start cutting out. Okay, so now we're going to cut the pattern pieces out of the fabric. So choose your fabrics, decide um, which fabrics you want to use. Um, for my gonk that I'm making today, um, I'm going to do a similar one to this one. So it'll be the red hat for the outer. For the lining of the hat, it's going to be um, this red fabric and then for the body I'm going to use this green keeping it nice and Christmassy themed. You're also going to need um, some fur. I've got this fur um, which is nice long pile fur. Um, it's quite nice because it's wispy and it sort of flows down um, so you can get a nice beard and um, you can even do a little moustache if you want to. Okay so let's start cutting out. So with all the pattern pieces I'm going to start off with the body so it's this part of him okay so this is the body so we'll start off and i'm going to use the green for that so we just need to cut one body out it's one body piece that does the whole gonk OK, 
put it on the fold if it's easier. So that's the body. I'll leave those two positioned together. Next, we're going to do the hat. So I've actually got a pattern, a one-way design. So just make sure that obviously the one-way design, I quite like to position these um, little birds in the centre of the hat. So if you're going to do that, um, it's a good idea just to line up any details on your pattern and make sure it fits. I'm going to put it right down this end and I'm going to cut this in one piece open down because it'll be easier. Struggle to cut out when I'm sat down. There we go. And that's the hat piece, so that will be the hat. We now need to do the lining of the hat. Now, if you're limited on fabric, you can just cut a piece of facing lining, which is just the bottom edge of the hat. But I actually think it gives it a nice body to actually fully line the hat, especially if you've chosen a thinner cotton as I have. So I'll put that to one side for now. I'm going to also cut the arms out of that. So we'll just finish with the hat. So that's the outer. I'm now going to take this red suede effect fabric, which is quite nice for the hat. Again, you just need to cut one and I'm going to cut it on the fold. So if you're cutting on the fold, just fold your piece in half, place the pattern down the fold, fold to fold, lay it out, find your cutter. And if you don't have a rotary cutter, then just draw around your pattern with a piece of chalk or pencil pen and then cut it out. So there we are. So that's the lining of the hat. So the two hat, you're cutting two hat pieces um, if you want to give him a lining so that you can do a turn up as I have there. So we'll put that together with the hat pieces. So the hat body, hiding the base. Um, so obviously the base I want to do in the same as the body. But, so we'll cut that out. And again, if you want to, you can cut it on the fold if it's easier. Um, just make sure that your fabric is right up against that fold and so you get a nice circular shape out of it. There we are. Now, all on, when we cut the base out, remember that we put um, all of the uh, quarter points on there um, and we also marked where we want the feet it's a good idea to transfer this onto your actual pattern piece so placing on top of it you can snip little notches or if you've got a light colored fabric I'm using a Frixon pen again it will disappear with the iron you can actually put little marks it's just so that you can see when you come to put it together so little dots I'm putting on there and the same with wet the positioning of the feet just to keep them nicely positioned either side of that center point there little marks so that you can see there we are so I don't think you'll be able to pick this up on the camera but I've just marked all the little notches that I put on there onto the base so we'll keep that together and pop that to one side okay the feet and the arms I've decided I'm going to cut out of this fabric. Obviously, you can use whichever colourways you want to. Now, on this one, um, I did actually do some little separate hands. I'll be honest, they were an absolute nightmare to turn the right way out, simply because um, it was very thick fabric. So if you do want to add some little separate hand pieces, then you just need to cut a section off the arm, put seam allowance on, don't forget, and join it together so it's one piece before you sew the whole arm up. Um, this one I didn't put separate hand pieces on um, that's just in the pattern so I'm going to stick and do it the same way it's much easier um, so for that I'm just going to cut the complete arm out in one go and you need two arms because the arm piece is allowing for it to fold into one piece so we just need the two separate arms and so we'll put those together ready for sewing uh, the feet, now the feet, we need a top and a bottom, so you need to cut four of these. Again, I'm going to fold it in half and cut two at a time because it just makes life a little bit easier um, and a little bit quicker. And there we have the other ones. I put all the feet together, get rid of that. And the last thing we need to cut out is the beard. Um, so obviously we made this beard shape. Now when you're cutting out, if you've got fur with a nice long pile like this one, uh, it does shed a bit, um, 
So obviously um, you want to keep this long overlap. You can see on the back it's hanging down and this is what we want to keep because this is actually what's going to give us this lovely shape at the bottom, um, this sort of wispy shape. So what I'm gonna do when you're cutting your fur is turn it upside down so that you've got the wrong side facing up to you. Take your beard um, pattern and pop that on top and what I'm going to do is just draw around it so don't use your rotary cutter um, for this you don't want to trim any of the any of this hanging over fur so let's just draw around it okay just quickly draw around this pen's not really working very well on here but it's fine so just sort of sketch a line around just so that you can see where you're cutting there we are so I've just drawn the pattern shape there. Chop off the top, like that, okay? So here you can see, and you will have some, just some of the top fibers coming away there, that's fine, because this is gonna be tucked up underneath the hat, so you won't actually see this, this top edge here, it's gonna be hidden away. And now what you're going to do is carefully get your um, scissors and just cut the actual backing fabric so you just carefully lots of little snips okay so when it's all cut out you'll see it sort of hangs in place and then you can just peel it away and as you peel it back I'll hold it up so you can see you're actually keeping those long fibers and there you can see if I show you from the back you can see we've kept that lovely long fur. Obviously, if we'd have just chopped all the way through that, we would have cut this and it wouldn't have had that lovely wispy sort of beard feel. So I actually think it looks quite nice if the nose is nestled actually in the beard as opposed to just sitting on top of it. Um, so I'm gonna fold the beard in half and then I'm just going to clip a little hole just about half an inch down. Okay, just clipping just the backing just make a little hole there. There we are. And then you can actually, it's gonna be difficult for me to show you, but I can actually see a little hole there where I've clipped it away and it just takes some of the fur out of there and will let the nose sit right far back against the um, body of it. Okay, so we're gonna start assembling it now. What we're gonna do is take the body first and I'm just gonna fold it in half and mark that center point on the base. Okay, so that's notched. Um, still folded in half, place your pattern back on and mark that center point for the beard there. And if you want to, you can also poke through and mark the end of the beard which I've just done there on the one side. The beard's gonna go on. We've got the center point, just double check. So that's my center point. And being very careful to stitch really close to the, to the edge and not actually stitch the fur the wrong way. We're just gonna do a line of stitches along that section there. Okay, and next we're going to take the arms. You're going to fold them in half lengthways. So stitch all the way down and curve around and the bottom end closed and do that on both of them. And next we're going to take the feet and do exactly the same. So we're gonna leave the top end open and stitch all the way around and back up. And you're gonna do that on both of them. On these samples, um, my lovely partner turned me some um, really nice wooden noses. You can also buy wooden beads that you sew on. You can get wood, plain wooden beads without holes on that you can glue on. Um, not a big fan of those because they tend to come off um, far more easily. Or if you don't have a wooden bead and you want to make one, if you've got any stretch fabric, and I recommend stretch for this because we're trying to create a round look and it works better if it's stretched. Um, any old t-shirts or anything you want to use that are kind of nose coloured. I'm going to use this fabric, it's a one-way stretch that will work fine and in order to do this you want to cut out a circle um, that is double the um, size that you want your nose to be. 
Okay, and for this, obviously, you don't have to be too accurate. Um, I've actually got this um, pot which I'm going to draw around. I'm going to cut that out. Okay, so um, I've cut out the nose piece. Now, it's best if you do this next bit by hand. Double up your thread and tie a knot in the end. And we're going to start off um, just close to the edge, so a couple of millimetres in, quarter of an inch at the most. And then we're just simply going to stitch up and down all the way around, a running stitch, so about, about half a centimetre, quarter of an inch um, stitches all the way around the outer edge. So you can see there, that's um, we're going to go all the way around and back to where we started without ending off the thread. There we are. So if I just pull that out, it will naturally start gathering as you're stitching it. But I'm just pulling it out to show you it's fine to let it start gathering. So there we are. Okay, so um, you should now have two feet and two arms, the beard stitched in place and your nose if you're making your nose as well then your nose stitched around ready for stuffing trim all the way around the edge quite close to your stitch line but not actually clipping your stitch line so there you can see um if you don't have pink and shears then cutting little notches all the way around is also fine and i'm going to do the same on both feet okay so both feet now clipped and the same with your arms. Obviously, we did the curve at the bottom, um, so just trim that curve across just to clear that off. You can use ordinary scissors on this, this section, just clip it across so that when it goes inside out, it works. Now, we need to turn these the right way around. They're a little bit tricky. If you've got a bodkin, um, that can also help. So uh, using the open bodkin, so you could, they're like tweezers, so you can reach down, grab some of the fabric at the bottom, and then just pull it through. So whichever way you, you prefer to do it, you've got to turn these the right way around. And that's why you don't want to make them too narrow. And there we are. So we have the two um, arms ready for stuffing and also the two feet. Right, so now we're ready to stuff. So we're gonna start off stuffing these small bits. So obviously it's quite fiddly to do. I use tools and things. Um, I'm using a seam ripper, it's got a sharp edge and it just helps me to push it into this actually a pen's quite useful as well you can use the end of a pen just something that's pointed that can help you get that into there and push it down you want these nice plump feet so pushing your filler in if you do decide to use a seam ripper um, when you're stuffing just be very careful um, obviously if there's a knife in there um, you don't want to bodge a hole in the bottom so if you don't want to use your seam ripper then you can use the end of a pen so long as it will fit inside there and just push it in okay so we have both feet both arms stuffed um just got to sort the nose so if you're if you're using a wooden nose ignore this bit um if you're making your own nose then obviously you have your piece that you've stitched around the edge not pulled tight so we're just going to take a ball of um, fiber and pop that in the middle and holding it in place take the needle which is still threaded all the way around and it just gathers up and creates a little nose so just make sure you've got enough fiber in there that you want um, once you're happy with how full it is just pull it tight really tight and it creates a nice little nose <laughs> so um, I've left my needle attached while I did that so pulling it really tight I'm just going to stitch through the gathers to hold it all closed um, and just make sure it doesn't come undone Take your um, body with the with the fur attached. Find the little hole that you made. If you made the hole, if not, then just I like to uh, to leave a little bit above so that you can make a little moustache for him. And obviously, his nose is poking out through. So if you've got a wooden bead, um, you can attach it at this point. If you're gluing on, then you might want to wait until you've assembled it before you glue it on because we're doing lots of inside and out and it will probably fall off. Um, so if you're sewing your nose on, whether it's a bead or um, you've done it this way, find the little hole that you made in the um, fur and pop it in place. And we're just going to go through just like you do with a button or anything. Just take it through and hand stitch this in place. So make sure it's in the right place and you're happy with it. And then you can just put a few more stitches through 
um, just like you would a button or anything else. So I'm going through the back gathers of the nose um, and I'm just going down into the fabric. So you can see there as I pull it away, just pull it in place. And just making sure it's nice and snug in position. We don't want it falling off. Sometimes when you're doing this, the fur gets in the way. So once you've got it in position, you can actually, it's actually a lot easier to stitch from the back and you can feel that you're going through the nose, but you're not having to deal with fur. So it's quite good. And then just clip it off. I'm leaving a little tail because it's on the inside. That's fine, the nose. So there we are, we have a nice little nose on our gonk. So he's starting to take shape. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is attach the arms. So I like to put the arms just at the side of the fur, which is roughly the side of the actual gonk. So you can either hand stitch or machine stitch these in place. Um, I'm just gonna quickly machine stitch them in place. Okay, so now you should have something that looks a bit like this. So a rather flat looking gonk. Okay, so next we're going to um, start the hat. You should have your lining um, of your hat and your outer. I'm going to put the right sides facing each other, okay? And I'm just going to stitch a line of stitches just along this bottom edge, a quarter of an inch in. So just along this curved edge here. Okay, so you can see there my stitching along the bottom. Um, just stitch those two together so we can open them out and have a little look. And this is going to be this sort of edge here, you can see more clearly on this one. So it's gonna be the bit we fold back at the front. So if you've left quite a lot of seam allowance, um, rather than a quarter of an inch, which I've done, then because it's a curve, we're gonna to need to clip it. So either clip it or pink in shears, just to, just to help that curve lay flat when it's turned the right way. There we are. So I've just trimmed that. So now I'm going to turn this so that it's the right way round and just push out that, cur that curve there. So you can see now that's laying really nicely. So now I'm going to place the hat where it, where it needs to go on my gonk. Now when, when I do my gonk, I like it to sit a little bit lower so that I can turn up and fold and create this, this little hem here. Um, so I'm going to position slightly lower than I want it. And you can see where you're gonna have it turned up by just folding it up. So I'm gonna bring it down to about here. So it's just hiding his nose, just coming to just below his nose. And then I'm going to line up the hat with the edge here. And for that, I'm gonna use some pins because the hat is actually bigger than the um, body because I want it to be a nice slouchy hat. So I'm going to put some pins along this edge, going along that line and just put a few pins in to make sure all the raw edges are in line. Now your hat will sit bigger than the body, that's fine. You want that to be like that. So don't worry that it comes a bit taller. There we are. And then the same with this side. So just make sure you've got a nice edge along there and that the, all the edges, the hat edges, the raw edges, everything, all three, are lined up along that edge and you want to try and make sure that the distance between this section of the body here and this section of the body without the hat here are exactly the same so that when we do join it together your hat's not lopsided so i'm just going to take a measure of this so from the raw edge up to where my hat is is two and a half inches and i'm just going to make sure it's exactly there on the on the other side of the body and we just pin that in place like that. Okay, so now we're gonna squish the, the extra bit of hat, there, squish that in, and we're gonna fold it over and put right sides together, okay? Now at this point, you can double check that, that the two hat pieces, edges, are actually on top of each other there. So just really make sure that those two are together and pop a pin in there, like that. And pin at the bottom. And then all the way up, you can just remove the pins that we had in before and now put those through all of the layers. There we are. So just make sure when you're doing your stitching, obviously you'll go up here and there'll be a part, you're just catching those raw edges, but just really make sure it is the raw edges that you're getting and not the sort of like folds in the hat. Just take your time to make sure that all 
In fact, if it helps, you can peel that bit away and just concentrate on the hat. There we are. So I have all mine pinned all the way up there, up the outside. Now, if you want to make your hat curve at the back, at this back section here, as you can see, I can stretch that out. It's just elastic that I've actually used along this seam. So if you do want to do that, you can either use strong thread and pull it as gathers, or you can take a piece of elastic, which I have here. I just have some quarter of an inch uh, wide elastic. Um, and I'm just gonna cut a piece, depending, you don't want your gathers too far down, just at the top of it there. So I'm just gonna take a small piece just for reference, the piece I've cut sort of six and a half inches long. Um, I'm not going to use all of that. I'm going to start it sort of at the top, around about here at the top of the hat and stretch it. And I'm probably going to finish it about halfway. So for me, where that red pin is there, I'm going to stitch that all the way down there and pulling it. As I stitch, I'm going to pull it tight, which will create that gather at the top. Okay, so we're all stitched. Um, the elastic, if you've chosen to put it in um, along that seam, um, is already giving it that nice curl. So having left the little hole in the base, um, my fabric's fraying quite badly. So if you've got fabric that is fraying, just be careful turning it inside out. You don't want it to fray too much so that you have no seam allowance. So just carefully turn the gnome out. Now what you'll find is because the hat is attached at the back seam only is that it may come out looking a little bit crazy but don't worry about that we can sort it. There we are. So he's actually looking lovely so now is the time to start stuffing him um, so we're going to use this hole again if your fabric is really fraying as mine is um, just stuff it carefully and you're going to have to pull it a little bit tighter closed at the bottom. I've actually got some um, fish tank gravel, which I had at home anyway, um, and it works quite nicely. So I'm just going to hold open the hole and you can use a funnel. It makes it a lot less messy, but I'm just going to pour some of these in. And just put some of this gravel in the bottom just to hold down that. So you don't want to overfill him if you've got, if you're putting gravel in. I'm going to try and use, actually, this might work. Put some gravel onto your template and pour it in. Much less messy. <laughs> Okay, so all that's left to do now is just to seal up this little hole that we've got on the base. Now, it might have got a little bit tatty, as you can see mine has, um, with stuffing it and everything else. So you just need to put your fingers in as we normally do and close up that hole. It may mean that, that the, that the um, circle shape of the base is slightly distorted. Um, don't worry about this, it's on the bottom, it's on the back, it, it's fine. It's better for it to be sealed properly. And so just like normally, it's a doubled piece of thread with a knot in the end. Um, I'm just gonna start a little bit further back from the actual hole. So just again, by doing a tiny, tiny stitch and then going back through the loop just before the knot. It just gives you a nice solid base to start stitching from. Uh, 
and there we have him. So he's looking a little bit disheveled because he's been turned inside out and, and so just take a few minutes just to tidy up the hat fold, make sure it's all looking neat and there we go, finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would really appreciate a like um, and if you would like to subscribe, that would be fantastic. I want to keep bringing you these videos um, and uh, obviously um, any ideas that you've got would be fantastic.